Hello and welcome back to Cinematic Trash. I know, I know, it's been a couple months. Hey, I got the best grades I got ever this semester, so, you know, big chillin'. Big chillin'. <laughs> and yes, yes, I know, I know, the hair, yes, I know, all right? <laughs> Le leave me alone, guys. So, um, show of hands, do you believe in Bigfoot? When I was younger, I was a huge believer in the Bigfoot myth. Of course, growing up, I watched a lot of monster movies, so the idea of real life monsters that could be lurking in my own backyard, it was such a cool and fascinating concept for 10 year old Pierce. Bigfoot, or the Sasquatch, is of course the most sought after and the most studied creature in popular culture. In the mid 60s and the 1970s, there was the Bigfoot craze. You had the Patterson Gimlin footage that had come out and thousands of people were convinced that Bigfoot was out there and that it was real. Today, there are still people that believe that Bigfoot is real. In fact, the myth has sort of evolved some more with some people believing that Bigfoot is an interdimensional being with the power to travel space-time, which would explain why no one has captured one. Those bastards. With that being said, Bigfoot became a popular subject for monster movies and horror filmmakers, and there are now hundreds of these movies based on Bigfoot. Are any of them any good? Well, that's what I intend to find out. Today, I will be covering The Legend of Boggy Creek. Here in this primitive river bottom wilderness in southern Arkansas, along with deer, duck, crane, and beaver, lurks a creature that walks upright. Whether it is a man, a monster, or a myth, no one really knows. What we do know is the people around Falk, Arkansas, say they have seen such a creature nearly 250 times since 1954. And that this creature, whatever it is, emits one of the most terrifying sounds ever recorded. The Legend of Boggy Creek is a 1972 docudrama horror film brought to you by Arkansas-based regional filmmaker Charles B. Pierce. The film acts as Pierce's directorial debut and launched his career. The film was widely believed to be in the public domain, with countless DVDs and VHS releases flooding the home video market and in shitty quality. It wasn't until just recently Pierce's daughter Pamela Pierce got the rights back and had a pristine 35mm print restored by the George Eastman Museum so that the film could finally get an official Blu-ray release, which is the one that I got right here. Pamela Pierce also has the distribution rights, meaning that whenever you buy a copy of this film off the official website or on the Boggy Creek eBay account, you're actually buying it from Pamela Pierce. I'm not even joking. When you buy this film, Pamela Pierce will ship the disc to you directly from her house. And if you message her on eBay, she will autograph the Blu-ray free of charge. Hello, just making a quick last minute edit here. Um, I didn't realize until after I started editing this video that the official Legend of Boggy Creek Blu-ray had quietly gone out of print at some point in the last few months. I could have sworn it was still available. There was no like uh, notice or alert that the Blu-ray was going out of print. I was just pulling images online for this video and I realized that the eBay listings for the Blu-ray were over a hundred dollars and i was like well, well that can't be right you know what i mean so i started looking into it and i guess the film the official blu-ray did go out of print at some point you know like that that's pretty crazy uh, i'm sorry to disappoint everyone i can let you all know that there is a, a 4k release that was announced quite a while ago there's no official word on the actual release date all i know is that it's been they've been working on it since like 2017 and i think they made an official announcement like a couple years ago now so they've been working on this 4k release for a while now um so we have that to look forward to. So uh, again, sorry if anyone missed their chance on getting the Blu-ray. There is a 4K coming uh, eventually, hopefully. Now back to the video. Anyways, enough about the Blu-ray. What about the movie? So let's talk about the plot. It isn't so much a straightforward story. The story is actually told through a series of vignettes, accompanied by lots 
and lots and lots of nature footage and a whole lot of people named Crabtree. Maybe Smokey Crabtree, Fred Crabtree, Travis Crabtree, James Crabtree. Because of the way the story is told, there is no actual main character in the movie. If anything, the Falcon Monster himself is the main character, since he's the only common thread in all the scenes. It's an interesting angle that the film takes. At the beginning, the creature is more curious and elusive, but as the film goes on and more people encounter the creature, the creature becomes more violent since none of the people that encounter him know how to stay calm. Creature even attacks a guy while he's taking a shit. The film is, of course, supposed to be like a documentary. A lot of the characters in the film are real people portraying themselves. In some scenes, even reenacting the experiences that they've had. And he ran on east, jumped over the fence, just seemed like he just sort of pushed it down with his left hand, just stepped over. It was wounded and was holding that right chest. It had that right hand on his chest all the time that it was in sight. Maybe if it hadn't been hurt uh, pretty badly, why, it might have run on all four legs. I don't know. But uh, it wasn't. It was running on two legs at all times. The film makes sure to let you know that it's based on a true story. There's no fucking around here. The film was also smart enough to make sure to include some opposing viewpoints. People always ask me, have I seen the folk monster? Now let me tell you something. There ain't no such thing. I ain't never seen or heard no monster. The film does have a narrator who's meant to guide you through the events of the film, as well as add to the general eeriness and atmosphere. Falk is a, a right pleasant place to live until the sun goes down. It's as if you were being told a scary story while sitting around a campfire. The film boasts some beautiful cinematography and some excellent camera work, making most of the scenes with the monster look pretty convincing, like the supposedly real Bigfoot footage at the time. The film isn't without its quirks though, like the creature's costume switches from a gorilla costume to a costume where the creature has a giant beard. The creature was designed to have three toes instead of five for some reason. Well now doesn't the uh, Sasquatch have a normal five toes? This thing here has uh, only three toes. The color grading is a little off at times, like in this shot where the flames in a fire are purple. The film also has some musical numbers where the film will come to a complete stop so that we can hear a song with some more nature footage. And there's even a song dedicated to a character who was on screen for like five minutes and no speaking lines. Hey, Travis Crabtree, wait a minute for me. You guessed it, it's about a crab tree. So, what can I say about this movie? As far as Bigfoot movies go, this is probably the best one that there is. This film is eerie, it's atmospheric, it treats the subject seriously without making it goofy, and the monster scenes are handled very well too. Not too much, but not too little. I really like the narration and the overall story. Now, the overabundance of nature footage can be a little overbearing, and some scenes could have been quicker. All in all, I really like this movie, and I'm glad we can finally see this film in good quality. For a film made on such a short budget, the film can serve as a lesson in effective and efficient filmmaking, due to its quaintness. The film would go on to be a success at the box office, leading director Pierce to go on to direct his next feature, The Town That Dreaded Sundown, an early slasher film. It would also spawn two sequels and a couple unofficial sequels. The film most notably inspired the guys who directed the Blair Witch Project, and it also served as a basis for an episode of Monster Quest, if you remember that show. Remember Monster Quest? Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers. On Monster Quest. Yeah. So I would say that yes, the Legend of Boggy Creek is a cinematic treasure, a gem if there ever was one. Anyways, folks, that's all I've got for you today. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments, have you seen The Legend of Boggy Creek? 
If so, what'd you think about it? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, um, until next time, take care. Hey, Travis Crabtree. Wait a minute for me. Let's go back in the bottom.